What's up, Crypto Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name's Fareed. As a part of today's video, we're going to do a brief refresher here on the Apex Fusion blockchain. I want to break down all of their latest updates, accomplishments, and then give you an opportunity to go ahead and join in as we're awaiting their highly anticipated airdrop, which should be taking place as soon as they hit the mainnet launch. Now, if you've missed everything about Apex Fusion, I've got a couple of videos. I'll leave the links to them down below as a part of today's video description. But in a nutshell, they're aiming to connect the unconnected, right? Or at least to bridge the gap between disconnected networks. And so historically, we have two types of accounting models, one being the EVM or the account based uh, model, followed by the EUTXO or the UTXO model, which Bitcoin, Cardano and other networks also use. Now, historically, they've been unable to connect or just to even speak or engage with one another when you take a look at different networks. And there's obviously been a lot of tribalism. People, for example, that are Bitcoin maxis, ETH maxis, Cardano maxis, you name it. Each blockchain has a lot of dedicated members or communities that are involved with those networks. Now, again, with something like Apex, it's aiming to basically bring the best of both worlds, the best of those accounting models together on one unified chain. Now, the way that they're able to do that is by taking advantage of Prime, which is a fully decentralized layer one solution using Ouroboros, the same exact consensus protocol that Cardano uses. It also takes advantage of two separate layer two solutions. The first is Vector, which operates very similarly using a UTXO account model. And then there's also Nexus, which aims to replicate the account model supporting EVM based dApps. Now, in between all of that, you have the ability to basically move assets within each of those networks. And so here at the very bottom right hand side, there's the mention of the reactor router, which basically acts as a bridge moving assets, um, including Apex, which is the governing token for the blockchain between each of the separate layers. So hopefully that's a nice, simple breakdown. Again, I'll leave the links to my other videos, but it basically breaks down everything that I've just mentioned there in a little bit more detail, of course. Now let's talk about some of the most recent updates. Now I'm going to kick things off here with a tweet that was posted not too long ago by a gentleman named IV. Again, he sort of recaps the initial intentions for Prime Vector Nexus, and it talks about the reactor router bridge. Now, one thing here that I want to really highlight here is the upcoming airdrop. If you guys have kept up with the light paper for Apex, which was released about five or six months back. Again, I did a full deep dive on that. One key piece talks about an airdrop for the Cardano community, as well as the ETH or the EVM based community. If I'm not mistaken, it's somewhere around two to 3% of the total supply, which will be allocated for said airdrops. So looking here, it states to participate in the airdrop, you need to go ahead and use the test net as well as their upcoming Telegram mini app where you're able to complete on-chain and social tasks in order to increase your reputation. As a part of the breakdown of their white paper, I also highlighted the reputation system, which aims to basically give people a reputation score on the blockchain, depending on how involved they are with governance, dApps, et cetera, user activity. You sort of hopefully get the point there. So I do want to quickly at least highlight that there. I'm definitely anticipating to participate in Apex and to take advantage of the upcoming airdrop by participating on their live testnet as it stands. Now I'm going to give more details about the testnet, how you can get access to it and all of that good stuff. So the first and probably the biggest thing that I want to highlight here for today's update is the fact that the team has now raised $6 million in partnership with TRG Capital. So it states you were proud to announce the closing of our seed funding round led by TRG Capital, which we'll take a closer look at them here in just a moment. We hereby announce the closing of the $6 million funding round, giving the network a fully diluted valuation of $180 million. So super early, super young, but there's a lot of opportunity to be had here. Obviously not financial advice, but it's very reassuring and very positive to see that this team has already sort of hit it on the ground running with that $6 million race. So digging a little bit deeper here, there's an article released by Grit Daily, again, breaking down the $6 million race. I just want to read one brief section, and then we're going to jump into TRG Capital, look at some of their portfolios, and then jump into some of the more technical pieces for Apex, and I can go ahead and take advantage of their testnet. 
So here it states, Apex Fusion has raised $6 million in a private funding round to push forward its federated multi-chain blockchain network backed by TRGC or TRG Capital, a research-driven investment firm. The funding will accelerate the company's go-to-market strategy and the continued development of its cutting-edge layer one blockchain architecture. With the fully diluted valuation of $180 million, Apex Fusion is positioning itself as a leader in solving one of the biggest uh, blockchain industry's issues, which is fragmentation. Again, a breakdown in liquidity between ETH, Bitcoin, Cardano, etc. Now, what's really reassuring is some of the news that we've seen more or less about Bitcoin OS and Cardano, where there's going to be some sort of trustless ZK powered bridge allowing for assets to move back and forth. So theoretically, given the fact that Apex is also UTXO based, or at least has support for UTXO, we could potentially see assets or liquidity moving from Bitcoin over into Cardano, and then from there over into the vector uh, ecosystem, which again is that representation of the UTXO model within the Apex Fusion architecture. Okay, moving right on over, taking a look at TRG Capital. Their website is available at trgc.io. It states here that they're a research-driven investment firm where they invest in founders building category-defining companies at the cutting edge of digital assets, blockchain, and blockchain-related companies. Jumping straight into their portfolio here, a couple of names I want to highlight. So number one is Eigenlayer, a restaking protocol building on ETH. And then second is the Peak Network, which actually is just about to launch, but they're dealing with Deepin. And I love the fact that Nuvla, which is building right now on Cardano, and they're planning to build their own partner chain, has been in talks with the Peak Network, given the fact that Nuvla and their Vola Network is all dealing with Deepin, which is basically the strong suit for Peak Network. And so taking a look here, we have the official Eigenlayer website, again, breaking down their restaking and how that works across ETH, giving people the ability to go ahead and actually stake their ETH and still tap into the value of that staked asset. And then here we've got the Peak Network, again, aiming to basically power a global infrastructure revolution touching basically on one of the biggest sectors right now, which is decentralized physical infrastructure or DPIN. So that'll do it there for that brief bit. If you guys are enjoying today's update on Apex so far, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave those down below. So let's talk a little bit more about the technicals now that we've got the intro and the most recent funding round out of the way breaking down how number one, you can get access to the test net, but the number two, keep track of the growth of the Apex Fusion network. So right now we're looking at the prime test net. If I click on this drop down here at the top right hand corner of the screen, I can also jump over into the vector test net. And I assume that over time we'll also have access to the Nexus test net there as well. Looking at the left hand side there, we've got information about tokenomics. So the total number of assets in circulation, the total amount of Apex tokens staked, the number of stake pools, and then the current saturation point, followed by the reserves and the different parameters for a given epoch. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if you do participate right now as a part of the test net, as an SPO, you will be able to earn a little bit of saturation once, once things go live, meaning that you won't have to mark it as hard and you'll basically be able to hit the ground running minting blocks from day one. So I'll definitely be taking advantage. I do have a DAP central stake pool operating right now on the um, Apex Fusion network. So I do want to be transparent about that. And hopefully as things roll into mainnet, I'll be able to switch that over and provide support on mainnet for Apex Fusion. If you want more information about blocks, that is also available here. So looking at the left-hand side there, you can view all of the latest blocks, how quickly they're propagated, all of that good stuff. And then we've got additional information here, more or less about the different pools. So we can see exactly how many de delegators are within each pool. And then we can see which pools are brand new and will be coming online or become active following this current epoch. Last but not least, if you want information about the most recent addresses and transactions placed on Prime, Vector, or Nexus, or at least in this case, Prime specifically, you can go ahead and review that here within this user section. So in terms of documentation here, if I jump over, if you have any questions just about how Apex works from a developer's perspective as well, you can jump over here. They've got general information, 
and then they've got developer resources and tooling at the very bottom. So again, depending on your level of expertise, they've got a lot of documentation and content for you to go ahead and review and familiarize yourself for the Apex Network. Now, we also have a Prime Explorer developed by Eternal or Ethernal, I should be careful here because Eternal as a wallet is also working with Apex and they're from Cardano, whereas Ethernal is actually from the EVM community or from the EVM space. Again, pretty simple here. You've got a search bar to search by address, block number or transaction hash. You've got the recent pools that have come online, some of the recent block information, and then some of the most recent transactions followed by a new section here and then the ability or quick uh, access point to the reactor bridge. Very similarly, there's a uh, vector explorer, which has now gone live as well. And then as we get ready to close things down here, earlier I mentioned the Telegram mini app for their reputation score. So this allows for you to create a citizen avatar, engage in various communities and network tasks. It also allows for you to build up your score on chain. And then obviously you have the ability to invite friends and also earn referral bonuses. So without any further ado, I'm going to play this. It's relatively quick here, but you'll notice at the very top there, you've got a learn to earn section. You've also got the person's user ID and how many points have earned so far. They've got some quizzes there. We can see active quizzes here. There's also the concept of quests or different tasks to complete. And then again, we can see that full list here, some of the recent activity and some of the um, earning potential when it comes to referrals and onboarding and um, basically spreading the message and sharing everything that Apex Fusion has to offer. So that's a nice little brief bit there. As we get ready to wind things down, I do want to talk a little bit more about support coming in. And this is from the Jira Wallet team. So if you aren't aware, Jira Wallet basically built on Cardano. Now they're going to be expanding and opening up their doors into the Apex Fusion ecosystem. Very similarly, the team from the Eternal Wallet, which is a Cardano based wallet, has also joined on board. And they also now provide access to the Apex uh, Fusion testnet, I believe for Prime and for Vector as well. So jumping back in here, there's a brief video. This is where this was released, excuse me, by the Jira Wallet team. Again, just really showing the fact that you can use their Jira dashboard now in order to, to take full advantage of what Apex Fusion and their current testnet has to offer. Jumping over here, um, in wrapping up, I recently met Kareem Sayoun um, at the recent Cardano Summit taking place in Dubai. And so for anybody who wants to keep up from a content perspective with everything being built on Apex, there is the Fusing the Unfusable series hosted on YouTube again. So we've got Kareem here who interviews different guests and contributors to just the crypto and blockchain space, but then also focusing a lot of the content and topics back over into Apex and how these things could potentially be used or leveraged, right? Or just sort of brought to light in this brand new blockchain and the opportunity that it provides. So that will do it here for today's update when it comes to Apex Fusion. Just doing a brief recap, highlighting Prime, Vector, Nexus, and the Reactor Bridge, which again are all live on the testnet. As a quick reminder, if you want to participate in that airdrop, jump on, create a wallet, whether that's done through uh, Eternal or Jiro and then just begin to interact, right? And so I think after everything wraps up, those there's probably gonna be some sort of announcement about the airdrop. Don't take my word for it, just my two cents there. And then of course we've highlighted the most recent $6 million seed round, which has just closed with big investments coming in from TRG Capital, which is also invested in Eigenlayer and Peak, just to name a few. And then I've just broken down how you guys can get access to the testnet and the explorers if you wanna go ahead and participate. That will do it here for today's update, breaking down everything Apex Fusion. If it's your first time stopping by Dapp Central and you found any portion of today's video to be helpful or informational, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, breaking down everything Apex Fusion, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.